Today, we're gonna to be looking at AI tools that can enhance your 3D workflow. This video is sponsored by NVIDIA. For today's video, I'll be using the sponsor provided ASUS ZenBook Pro Duo, powered by the GeForce RTX 370 Ti and running NVIDIA Studio drivers. So if you're looking for the perfect laptop to head back to school with, check out an NVIDIA Studio laptop like the ASUS ZenBook Pro Duo. I've exclusively used NVIDIA-based laptops for the last 12 years, and in that time, not only have they continued to get faster and more efficient, they've also gotten cooler. Studio drivers speed up Creative processes with GPU acceleration, making them ideal for long renders. So if you're looking for the perfect laptop to head back to school with, check out an NVIDIA-based laptop like the ZenBook Pro Duo. Let's dive into some AI tools that can save you time as you get back to school and work in Blender 3D. So AI art generators, these are probably the one everybody's heard of. So let's get that out of the way and then get to the new stuff. Dolly has been trending recently for its incredibly humanistic results and Google recently announced Imogen, which apparently is even more powerful. If you can't get into the waiting list on these, you can check out Midjourney, which operates through Discord. Curse Holt has an in-depth tutorial on how to use it as well. The big limitation of these generators is that when working with clients, they oftentimes have specific feedback, and iterations for art and these tools can't yet implement that feedback. I could see this being really useful for generating landscapes, skies, and background map paintings to use in 3D as well for singular artists. It's also a great way to generate mood boards and get inspiration for school projects, allowing single artists to easily fill out their scenes. AI upscaling. This one's kind of basic but doesn't get enough artists utilizing it. AI is now being used to upscale artwork and remove artifacts. Gigapixel is the most popular paid option that I found, and Upscaler from stockphotos.com is the best free option I found. The great thing about this is that if you're on a lower end machine or having a complex scene, you can render at a lower resolution, then upscale to the desired resolution. This is actually what NVIDIA is doing with games now to upscale them on devices in real time. This allows for better graphics and almost the same level of detail and resolution. It's as simple as uploading images and clicking upscale. We're now seeing where it can help us with modeling as well. For example, human model generation. Facebook released a new tech called PIF UHD, and it allows you to generate 3D models from one front-facing photo of a person. This is great for creating background models of people, and if you're familiar with work like Ian Hubert's, I could see this being incredibly helpful for these type of renderings. It runs out of the Google Collab right now, and you can create a duplicate, upload an image here, and just let it do its thing. It'll spit out a 3D model with textures, which you can import into your scene. Now the geometry isn't super animation friendly, but like I said, it's perfect for filling out background scenes. This next tool is pretty cool. It's called Dane, and it's similar to upscaling. What if you could render lower frame rates and then add the frames in between? Dane does just that. It can artificially generate frames based on a series of input frames. There are loads of videos of people taking old timey footage or old 12 FPS based cartoons and boosting the footage to 60. The results are incredible. So how can this save you time? Imagine you have a complex scene you want to render an animation of, but it's taking 20 minutes a frame. Imagine rendering at six frames per second, cutting your render time down by four times, and then putting that into Dane to fill out the rest of the frames. When I was in college, I often found myself experimenting with solutions like this to meet project deadlines. Now, I've ran into some limitations with them, as it still requires a lot of memory to output frames. So it's not going to work on high resolution at the moment, and it makes more useful for kind of insanely dense scenes. Otherwise, there may be a faster method of achieving a full render, such as AI denoising. However, as this tech improves and gets more efficient, I envision it being a major help to us artists. This last tool is called EB Synth. It was turning for quite some time for its ability to take a painted frame and apply that look to an entire video. I haven't seen this utilized as much lately, and I think that's largely due to its complex nature and not being super user-friendly. However, this has the potential to put a lot of power in the artist's hands. The way it works is you input an image sequence with the few keyframes you've altered. Then it'll do its best to render the entire sequence to match those few keyframes you've entered. Now, some YouTube channels like Joel Harvers use it to create a unique style of animation. However, I think this could be used much more subtly too, trying to get a certain look for your scene. It may be more efficient to do it with AI than in a 3D rendering pipeline itself. This can also be used to quickly correct renders. For example, adding a highlight to a character's eye, painting out a mistake, or removing elements from scenes entirely can be faster done with EV Synth than in re-rendering sometimes, depending on your scene. Though truthfully, this tool is so powerful, I'd love to hear how you think it could be used in the comments below. What do you think? Do you want to see more videos like this? Let me know in the comments below. I found a lot of AI tools worth sharing. If you want to learn more about this laptop or NVIDIA Studio, check out the link in the description below. I'd highly recommend this laptop for anybody heading back to school. If you're interested in a render comparison video, let me know in the comments below. I have a few different NVIDIA GPUs I can compare. Thanks for watching.